This is the Foundling Museum, which tells the story of the Foundling Hospital, which was a childcare institution established in 1739 by Thomas Coram, and which continued until the middle of the 20th century. The Foundling Hospital was built on the edge of London in the 18th century, is now in part of the centre of London, and it was pulled down at the end of the 1920s when the children were moved out to the countryside. So the Handel Collection is a very important collection of Handel materials, there's over 12,000 items, the biggest private collection of Handel materials. And it's particularly interesting because it's so mixed media, so as well as books and manuscripts, which you might expect, and the scores, obviously, and libretti, we also have artworks and artefacts. We have a very big collection of what's called performance ephemera, which is tickets and playbills and receipts. The tickets in the 18th century were rather lovely engraved artworks, really, and we have one relating to the hospital performance of Messiah in 1773, where you can see the line asking the ladies to come without hoops and the gentlemen without swords, which was quite common for 18th century charity performances because you can fit a lot more people in if you haven't got your big hoops. We don't know a lot about Handel's personal life. There's a lot of speculation about it. Very few letters survive, but the will itself, particularly the final codicil, is a, a long list of the people who he dealt with in everyday life, his neighbours and his friends, and the small bequests he's making to them, which really gives us context for Han how Handel lived in London in the 18th century. And the link with the Foundling Hospital as he left the score and parts of Messiah in his will so they could continue with benefit concerts after his death because there was no printed parts in those days. So if they didn't have a full manuscript set, which runs to over a thousand pages of music, they wouldn't be able to carry on with the concerts, which they did for another two or three decades, which continued to raise good sums of money and meant a close association of the Messiah performances with the hospital. Handel's will had a narrow escape in the 20th century. The Handel collection was gathered by Gerald Cook, a businessman in the 20th century with a passion for Handel, who gave it to the museum. Soon after he bought it, it was just lying on the hall table. And uh, as they were going out for dinner, Mrs. Cook picked it up and put it in her handbag. This was during the war, and it was just as well because when they came back, a bomb had gone through the hall and the will would have been destroyed. Working with the Handel Collection has been particularly interesting over the last 15 years because we've taken a private collection into public ownership and although ha Gerald Cook collected it with a particular interest in mind, there are so many other undiscovered nuggets. So we found unknown works by William Boyce and by Vivaldi in the collection and also different angles that we can look at. For example, we've been looking at women publishers uh, which in the 18th century, which was not an area that he collected, but incidentally there's quite a good gathering of such material. My favourite item is a little receipt from the Tower of London when Handel wanted to borrow extra large kettle drums for the Dead March in Saul. The only place that had big enough drums was the Royal Ordnance in the Tower of London, so there's a receipt which he signed promising to bring them back in good repair. In 1749, Handel attended a meeting of the Founding Hospital Governors here in this very room and offered a benefit concert for the completion of the chapel which had been built but was not yet fully uh, furnished. The governors were very happy to accept and three weeks later a concert was announced for which he composed the Foundling Hospital Anthem. He was actually quite um, generous in his ideas and we have the minutes here which show the various works that he um, promised for the first concert. It was going to be the music for the Royal Fireworks which had had its first performance um, that summer and the anthem on the piece, and um, select parts of Solomon, one of his oratorios, which is the, the pieces the party chose is about the building of the temple. This was appropriate because this concert was going to fund finishing the building of the hospital chapel. And we're not sure why Handel came to the hospital in the first place to offer this concert, but we think it might be because his publisher, John Walsh, was already a benefactor and might have prompted him, saying they need a bit of money to finish building the chapel, they had the structure, but they hadn't got the windows and they hadn't got the furniture. So the choice of the Solomon pieces was quite apt. And then he rashly added several, several pieces composed for the occasion, the words taken from scripture and applicable to this charity and its benefactors. And for this, we got the Foundling Hospital Anthem, which begins with the text, Blessed are they who consider the poor and the fatherless. Um, so very apt text. Uh, it isn't several pieces, it's one continuous piece with um, choruses and arias. 
Uh, from the records in the hospital, we can see that there was quite a lot of commotion to organise this first concert. It was supposed to be um, on a particular date, the 24th of May, um, then it was moved to the 25th, and then they printed a programme, so the first programme says the 25th. But then the actual concert was changed again to the 27th, so it didn't clash with the Prince of Wales's birthday, because he said he would attend, but uh, not on his birthday. So it actually took place on the 27th of May. Handel was a great self-borrower, so when we say he composed this work for the concert, he actually borrowed some tunes that he'd already used previously, um, particularly in Italy, that might not have already been known. And he also finished it with a Hallelujah Chorus, which, of course, we all know from Messiah, but at the time, Messiah was not a popular work and it wouldn't, the audience would not have recognised it. The audience was um, a great gathering of the nobility and the gentry, um, and uh, it was very much the place to be seen. The coup of getting the Prince of Wales did mean that uh, it would attract a certain crowd um, and also raise the status of the hospital as a venue for the polite society to come again and again as they did for later benefit concerts. In 1750 Handel came back with a proposal for a performance of Messiah and the governor was very happy to accept. Um, they scheduled the concert, they printed I think 1500 tickets which was far more than the the chapel could actually accommodate, so people turned up and they couldn't get them all into the chapel. Um, so Handel came back, and it's all recorded in the minutes, which we have here, um, and offered to do a second concert to uh, satisfy all those who'd been turned away the first time. It was a big operation. They booked constables to manage the traffic. They had people who were detailed to stop people climbing in through the windows, which was something that tended to happen in the 18th century concerts when there was a scrum. Um, and on the back of that success, he gave a performance of Messiah for the hospital every year until he died in 1759. There were other philanthropic people. One of them was John Beard, the leading tenor of the day, who came and sang at all these benefit concerts of Messiah. And we have his music here with his name on the top, Mr Beard. And we have his portrait in the collection. And we also have a payment list. This one is from 1760 and we can see against his name there is no fee. So Beard was quite a wealthy um, as the leading tenor of the day and we, he appears to, to have been very philanthropic and he just donated his fee. I believe the first time it was actually paid to him and he returned it and after that he, um, he just came with no fee. The top soprano wanted six pounds and six shillings, the bass only got two pounds and two shillings and we can see all the chorus singers and how much they were paid and also all the instrumentalists. This is a really useful resource for seeing how many people were in the original performances um, and how small scale it was compared with the, the big oratorio um, choral society performances that came along later. Handel had composed Messiah in 1741 and it was first performed in 1742 in Dublin, again for charitable purposes. Messiah is very much associated with benefit concerts and has always been so, but it was the founding hospital performances which really established that tradition. And after that, it's, as we know, it's now part of the sort of DNA of the nation. Yeah.